day everyone and welcome to another segment on the bench. Today I'm going to bring you a very simplistic little fly here. This is a Pat's Rubber Legs by, uh, created by Pat Bennett. It's a very innocent looking little bug but it's anyone that's fished these flies can testify that they are one of the better flies in the water. I'll tell you if you're looking for stonefly imitations they're going to find some that are going to look a lot more uh, specific or imitate the stonefly a lot better than this one but I'll tell you the movement and everything that has gone with this fly it's just a killer pattern it's a simple pattern to tie uh, it's got a couple little tricks or maybe for a beginner tire might uh, kind of get you a little bit on a couple things so I'll, I'll just go over that with you but it's a great fly for beginners and and also anybody that's fishing in moving water make sure you have several of these around I'm going to be using a DHE uh, 220 size 8 hook on this one you can go to and tens on this as well and uh, sixes if you have bigger stones in your water where you're fishing uh, the mer uh, the chenille I'm using on here is uh, peacock and uh, uh, brown you can use brown black uh, different colors are very good on this the legs I'll be using here are some speckled uh, silly legs he's got a little metal flake in them use whatever uh, legs you like some guys use the floss uh, these are nice legs to use. They are a little uh, sensitive. You want to make sure when you're using uh, this kind of a leg that you're using a flat thread. I've got some uh, nano silk on here from Semperfly. Uh, I believe that's a 3 aught. So let's go in. Also we need some weight. So we're going to need uh, some 1 8 uh, beads here. These are tungsten beads. I got these out of Togans. Very nice beads. Also on the front of that uh, on the body we'll be using some 0 .020 lead so we want to get make sure we get it down in the current so you may want to bulk that lead up a little bit more it depends on the depth of water you're fishing or you can add another split shot ahead whatever you like so I put the bead uh, with the uh, beveled side to the front the open side to the front on this reversed it I've covered up most of the shank with my 0 .020 lead wire so we'll just start on the front here, slip this bead back, give a little space. Flat thread sits down really nice. We'll uh, come in here with the uh, silly legs. I want to grab three. Just cut three off. For each, that'll do two, two flies. What I do now is Grab one of my legs. Oh, actually, what I need to do, sorry, I gotta get ahead of myself sometimes when I'm talking. I forget to think. <laughs> it's a common, common mistake I make. Talk more than I think. I'll just bend them over in the middle, cut them in half. Then I'll take one of the short ones that are cut in half now and go again. Fold it over so the ends are even. Put my scissor in there, nip that in half, then I'll have equal pieces, and then I'll go around the thread with these short ones. Antennae, make sure the tips are lined up, come along, just get it on the shank. You don't want to pull this silly legs too tight because it'll it's quite fragile actually break on you it'll pull apart those metal flakes on there kind of weaken the material a little bit so just don't overstretch them I will finish that off then my bead will fit right over the antennae so now I'll start my thread in on top that thread that I had underneath bring my lead right up the top come right over the Make sure you get it dammed over the, the back of the lead. Now that won't move back. you got a pretty good foundation to work with. Otherwise it's going to slide. And I'll do the same on the rear for the uh, tailing material. Just take that one of those short pieces, the mate to that one. Slide it up. Give it a slight stretch. And just get a few loose wraps. Don't don't get them too, too snug. You'll break it. But the flat thread will definitely help if you use... I'm not using flat thread you'll cut cut this uh, rubber material quite easily you can use round rubber legs uh, some guys use stretch floss I think it's original pattern 
Um, you can use whatever you like. Uh, some use three legs on each side. I just use the two. I'm just tying my chenille here at the back. I'll come in mid shank here. Bring in two of my matching pieces of rubber. Now we've got two. I'll just tie them on top. I'm coming forward. Come back. I get a bit of a space in there, maybe quarter inch or so. Take my thread forward. Now I'll just take these back legs. They kind of get in the way, so I just fold them forward. Just lay the thread over. Just keeps them out of the way. Handy way of doing that. And then we'll uh, wind our chenille forward until we get to the rubber. Really release, come over the top in between. That should split the rubber pretty good for you there. Get another turn or two, another one there. Come in between it again. Two more turns, right in behind the tungsten bead. And these are pretty long legs, like some guys will use a lot shorter. You're going to see a lot shorter ones in the fly bins. You can cut them off if you like. Um, if you want to go shorter, go for it. I like to use just the longer ones. They just slip out the side. They look really well. It's really buggy when it's in the water. You can see all the squiggly motion on it. And uh, so Pat Bennett's created a great little fly here. It's a very innocent looking fly, but... Um, if you're fishing rivers and streams with uh, stoneflies in there, you want to make sure you have this simple little pattern with you. Pat's rubber legs and one of the better ones. Thanks again for watching. We'll catch you again real soon.